Hey guys, it's Avery with ExpressGarageDoorParts.com. Today we wanted to make a video explaining how to convert from a single torsion spring to a pair of springs on your garage door. Now there are several benefits to converting to a pair as I'm sure you are aware being that you are tuning in today. The first being longevity, making the springs last longer because they are sharing the workload instead of just a single spring doing all the work. Another one would be safety. So say if one spring breaks, you still have another spring there to help you raise and lower the door so you're not trapped in your garage. Another one would be balance. By having a pair of springs, you can balance out the door better because there are more options for adjustment, being that you have two springs to wind, and the list can go on and on. Now determining what springs you need to convert to is relatively easy, and we will explain that at the end of the video at the timestamp that you see on the screen, which you're welcome to skip to now if you'd wish. Otherwise, let's get started with the steps required to convert from a single spring to a pair. All right, now the first thing we always wanna keep in mind when dealing with garage doors is safety. So the very first step we wanna do is go back to the opener and disconnect it from the power. Once we do that, we're gonna go over to the front of the opener and we're gonna pull that emergency release cord disconnecting the opener from the door. What this does is so that if somebody inadvertently hits the opener while we're working on it, it doesn't raise up and get us while we're working on the door. So with that done, we're gonna go over to the track here, and another precaution we like to take is take a pair of ice grips, and you're gonna secure these just above one of the rollers. And what that does is it, so when we adjust the springs later and raise the door up for the first time, if the springs are a little hot and the door wants to raise up by itself, this stops that, so it allows us the opportunity to adjust them, maybe lower it down a little bit, just so it doesn't do something that we're not prepared for. So with all that done, we are ready to hop up and start working on our spring. Okay, now the first thing we wanna do when you have your single spring here is make sure that is in fact broken if you're replacing a broken spring or if it has tension on it if it's not broken. So looking at our spring here, you can see that it is actually broken. This gap here, uh, a spring will expand a couple of inches when it is under tension, so you'll see that expansion there when it breaks. Um, now, if this spring were to have tension on it, you do need to take that tension off before you release your bolts here, what I'm about to do. Also, this video correlates to a single torsion spring to a pair. So if you're doing from a pair to a pair, we have another video explaining how to do that. So if you do have a pair and you have a broken one, you need to unwind your other one as well. And we show you how to do that in the other video. Basically what you'll do here to, you're gonna loosen up your set screws here on your spring. We use a 3 8 square bit socket, which makes this a lot quicker. And just to make this video go a little quicker, we wanna do that for you. But you can just use a simple 3 8 wrench to do that. So what we're gonna do here, um, I'm gonna go over here and again, this is broken. If you want to need to take any tension off of any springs, do so. Watch our other video how to do that. So I'll come over here. I'm just gonna undo these real quick. So that frees up my spring here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my bolts here and I'm gonna loosen these up. Normally these are a 9 16 bolt, so you can just take a 9 16 wrench. Um, we're gonna use power tools because it's, again, make that, this video go a little quicker for you today. So we're gonna come over here. I'm gonna loosen these up for you. And once that's done, you're pretty much done taking your spring off. Another thing that's gonna be holding us up here is your, your uh, cable drums now. So I'll move over there and show you how to take those off so we can slide our spring off the shaft. Now that our spring is loose, we're free to take off our cable drums, which will allow us to slide our torsion shaft left to right so we can put our new springs on. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is we're gonna to go to these set screws on our cable drums and we're gonna loosen these up, which allows us to move that cable drum. So again, 3 8 wrench here, go up to these set screw marks, just put them right on here. We're just gonna loosen them up just like that. Do the other one here, loosen them up. We're gonna take our cable, just set it off to the side here. Pops right off. Lay it loose, and then the, again, the cable drum will be loose now, so we can slide that. Again, on the other side, you're just gonna do the exact same thing while you're doing that. So while that's loose, again, it'll allow our torsion tube to move left to right, so we'll do that. And you'll see it come loose there, so I'll take my drum, slide it off, set that to the side. And what I'll do is I'll take my spring then, and I'll slide it over. It slides right off like that. You take my other broken piece here, slide it right off. And now we'll take this opportunity to put on one of our new torsion springs that we have. So this is a right wound spring, which actually goes on the left side of center for most torsion systems, okay? So as you'll see is it has a red little swab of paint here. So we'll take this, we'll slide it on. Like that, slide it towards the center. We'll take our cable drum, put it right back on. 
slide it right back on the bearing there. And we'll pull it all the way down so our other side will come loose and we're free to put the spring on the other side now. All right, now that we have repeated the exact same process on the other side, we've used a left wound spring with a black cone on the right side. And remember that is a red coned right wound spring. So now that we have them, we're gonna bolt them together in the center. So we're gonna pull this together. You'll notice when you order from our website, we do include one of these nylon bushings. You'll notice some of these actually have a metal one built in. So you'll take ours and simply toss it. If not, this just goes right in the center. You get one per pair. So you just put it in there and bolt them together. So now that we have those, we'll slide them together, take our bolts, bolt these together. And you remember when we took these off, we used a 9 16 uh, wrench or um, socket if you're using power tools. So make these good and snug. Now that these are bolted, we are free to put on our first cable. Now moving on to our cables, it's pretty relatively simple process. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our cable. You're gonna notice there's a notch on the end of this cable. It's gonna go in this notch here on the drum. You'll notice when we put this on, it's facing in towards the drum, not out, so it gets caught on these brackets. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed it on, then we're gonna lead the cable onto these runners here, turning the cable, and we're gonna slowly push it back towards the bracket. Make sure that's good and on there all the way back around. Notice when the cable goes down, it's free and clear. It's not hung up on any of these brackets or the door itself. So once that's good, we're gonna hold that and then we're gonna secure this in place by tightening our set screws here. So again, that's a 3 8 wrench. You'll take this and you'll tighten these down. Now we get a lot of questions on our tech line here is how tight do we tighten these? What we recommend is once you go and you hit this tube, once you hit the tube, we recommend going about a half of a turn more and that sets it into this tube. And so that's good to go. Now what we're gonna do here so that when we let go, we don't lose our cable here and we're gonna put on our next cable. We're gonna take a pair of vice grips here and make sure this is good and taut here. So that's good on there. We're gonna take a pair of vice grips and we're gonna secure this onto the tube what that does is that keeps this tube good and taut so that when we put our other cables on, this tube doesn't loose and lose our cables. So now that we have this cable on, we're gonna put the next cable on and then we're gonna move towards putting uh, rotations or turns onto our torsion springs. Now that we have repeated the exact same process on the other side, both of our cables are taut and being held taut by that vice grip that we put on the tube. So. Both capers are taunt, we're good to put tension on our first spring. Now you're gonna be noticing, we're gonna be using winding bars. These are half inch steel bars that fit perfectly and encompass this entire hole on the torsion spring. We do sell these on our website. Please, please, please do not use anything but winding bars to wind up your torsion springs. If you use rebar or uh, we've even heard people using dowel rods or rat tail files or something to wind up their springs, this isn't really safe and you should not do that. So when it comes to springs, this is the most important and safe thing you can do is use the proper tools to wind up your springs. So now that we're ready, we need to think how many turns that we're gonna be putting on these springs. You'll notice this is an eight foot high door and we say on our website, it's 35 quarter turns on each spring and you can find that turn start right on our website. So each spring is gonna take 30 35 quarter turns. So I'm gonna take my winding bar, I'm gonna put it in this hole, make sure it's good and locks in there. So then I'm gonna raise up, that is one quarter turn. So then I'm gonna take my second winding bar and I'm gonna put it in the other hole, that's two quarter turns. And I'm gonna go all the way up to 35. So that's three, four, 33, 34, and 35. So now that we have the proper amount of turns, what I'm gonna do is make sure this bottom bar is good and in. I'm gonna rest that against the door and I'm gonna slowly pull out my other winding bar. That leaves all the tension of this spring on this bar. Now you'll notice when I was winding up this spring, I'm keeping my head clear of this cone. So if there anything were to go wrong or this bar would slip or anything, it's not in direct line of the spring where I would get hurt. Um, you'll notice also, um, I'm not wearing any safety goggles when I'm filming these videos. That's just due to the lighting restrictions that we have. If I was wearing goggles, there's a lot of glare and anything like that. So we do recommend using goggles that we just can't in this circumstance. So now that we have all the turns and everything on our spring, what we're going to do is we're going to take our three eighths wrench again, and we're going to tighten down our set screws and each spring do have, does have two. So we're going to tighten these down. Again, we're going to hit the tube and we're going to go half of a turn. Same as that, half turn. So that's good and tight. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna release the tension on this spring because both cables are holding that new tension. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my bar in here 
It's encompassing the entire hole. It's good and in there. I'm going to raise up. I'm maybe an inch or so. What this allows me to do is pull out my bottom bar and then I can slowly release the tension on my spring, which puts the tension on the cable so I can pull my bar out. Once that's good, we're free to wind up our other torsion spring. It's 33, 34, and 35. So that puts 35 quarter turns on each of our springs. Now remember, that is just for an eight foot door. If you have a seven foot door, it's 31 quarter turns. And you can find that turns chart right on our website. So now that these have the full amount of turns that we want, we're gonna set our set screws here using our 3 8 wrench. We're gonna again go to we hit that tube. And then we're gonna put about a half a turn on there to lock it in. Again, hit that tube, go about a half a turn. Once these are tight, I'm gonna take my first rod here, I'm gonna push it in the spring, I'm gonna push up about an inch. That releases the tension from this one, and I'm gonna slowly lower this down, putting the tension from the springs onto the cables, so we're good to go. Now that both springs have the proper amount of turns on them, I'm gonna go over to my vice grip that was on the torsion tube and release that. That was holding the cables taut, it's no longer needed because the springs are doing the job of that. Then what we're free to do is release our secondary vice grip on our track. That was there for if the springs were a little loaded or too hot, the door did something we weren't prepared to do, it was gonna stop that. So we're gonna go down there, put a hand on the door, release the vice grips, and then we're gonna raise and lower the door a couple times to see how well balanced that it is. If you're unsure how to do that, check out our other how-to videos on how to do that. It really goes in depth and shows you really the nitty gritty of how to do that professionally and successfully and safely. So once it's all good, your door is balanced, you're free to reconnect it to the opener and you're good to go. All right, now that we're finished, something to keep in mind when converting to a pair of springs is that your garage door requires a certain amount of lifting force that is currently being achieved by your single torsion spring. Now, it would be nice to simply measure out your current spring and add an identical spring to the other side, but this unfortunately isn't how it works. By doing this, we would be doubling the amount of lifting force required by the door, and the door wouldn't even go down. Now, that we're going to a pair of springs, we need each spring to lift half the door's weight so that together they do the work of what your current single spring was doing. So, this leads us to the question of how do we determine what the new pair of springs will be? Well, luckily enough, we here at ExpressGarageDoorParts.com do offer a couple of options to make this process as easy and quick as possible. The first being, simply call our free tech line and we'll simply tell you what the new pair of springs will be based off your current single spring. Or you can just shoot us an email and you'll get a response just as quickly. Keep in mind, all of our contact information is right on our website that you do see below, and you can stay tuned to the end of the video and we'll put it there for you as well. Now, if you do need help measuring out your current existing single spring, we can help you with that as well. Uh, you can just contact us via phone or email or even refer to our other how-to video where we demonstrate how to measure. Please remember, if you have any questions related to your springs, always feel free, contact us at our free tech line, our email, or just hop over to our website. We thank you so much for tuning in today and have a wonderful rest of your day.